Hello, good evening. It's uh, Adil Fazal, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review or end of day uh, market uh, review or analysis of the uh, European session. Uh, this is a uh, uh, the specialist in spread betting and CFD brokerage. Be sure to uh, uh, take advantage of the generous bonus offer of up to 25% at present. And uh, certainly do visit the educational site www.cfds.education to certainly learn more. Okay, now let's try and decipher as to uh, what's been happening with regards to the European markets today. The stats for the day or the end of the day uh, really is uh, the focus on the, well, first of all, the US session certainly finished positive. Albait flat, okay. Um, the NASDAQ uh, obviously helped by the Apple. Uh, Product or new product review, really, it's um, it's a process of evolution as opposed to uh, innovation, which really has has put a potential topping tail in the Nasdaq, uh, or should we say the Apple, uh, Apple stock, and that obviously is uh, is known as Apple Dac, and uh, should certainly exert downward pressure on on the Nasdaq itself. Now, the uh, the FTSE itself finished negative, uh, certainly flat stroke negative, Dax negative, stroke flat, CAC certainly down by 0.8%. So the uh, bullish move in China overnight certainly has failed to uh, have the uh, desired effect of uh, sending indices higher. Having said that, US indices certainly held in there and the Nasdaq certainly uh, outshone the rest. Now, let's see where the, uh, the market will be headed. Now, first of all, let's bring up the chart of China, I think, from my perspective, because China obviously is dictating this market right now. We had Japan obviously on holiday overnight. So again, that should come back online with uh, the USD JPY still languishing at that 111 level, uh, almost touching 112, which should still uh, signify a risk aversion trade. Okay, so the Shanghai is now into resistance. Unless we can get a um, uh, overwhelming bullish candle and go and aim for that potential gap fill above, it certainly is a negative session from my perspective going into the uh, into the morrow for the uh, the Nasdaq itself now. Now, the concerns of rising debt uh, certainly have not been factored in from my perspective uh, for the Chinese market. Now, just think of all the uh, overwhelming bearish arguments we had in the US and EU session, also China as well. So first of all, like I said, Chinese debt concerns uh, were highlighted overnight. So again, or over the weekend as well by Mr. Zhu. So we had anti-QE rhetoric from Mr. Weidman stating that monetary policy has exhausted itself and we must focus on fiscal. Uh, measures instead we had mr bullard who was hawkish obviously uh, pe uh post or uh, pending friday you're uh, going into the weekend so again certainly challenged this thesis that would be no more rate hikes this year given the election etc etc then we had mr gunlack today also stating that mr trump the idiot the bigot the racist and fanatic basically uh, is a wild card for the u.s markets and certainly is a, a overtly bearish um variable uh, for the U.S. markets, given the uncertainty that he poses, and obviously the, uh, the potential uh, outrage and protests, etc., that could ensue, especially given the fact that his own party don't want him to be the leader. I mean, that says it all, right there. Okay, so uh, U.S. Uh, recount as well on Friday, first time you see, we we witness a rise uh, in terms of numbers. The Greece bailout is obviously um, has hit a roadblock, and certainly is, there are concerns regarding that. Okay. Uh, the Tory party, we've got political instability in Europe, or should we say the UK, which has reverberations in Europe as well, given the fact that Mr Duncan Smith has quit his post and that creates uh, instability with regards to the Brexit or the Brexit vote going forward, OK? Uh, the Chinese uh, weakens the yuan, so the yuan peg will certainly weaken, which in turn should exert pressure on the, uh, the Chinese market, but obviously it didn't. Uh, the CBI Brexit warning, again, that's a cause for concern. Halford's cause for concern today. Well, generally, the overall all retail sector was a cause for concern because of the CBI highlighting the fact that the uncertainty that it poses for the retail sector going forward, especially given the sterling move and uh, the impact that can have on the profits. Uh, EU current account deficit was certainly weak. UK CBI data was certainly weak. Uh, also, comments from OPEC. Uh, some OPEC members uh, uh, basically ref uh, refrained from attending. Uh, and also uh, concerns with regards to output freeze, uh, obviously having a, any major impact and whether or not it sustains this move up to $40. Mr. Gunlack obviously disagrees. Okay, uh, China copper demand to slow. So there's an article out with regards to Chinese copper demand slowing and obviously taking 85 days for any uh, major organization to receive payment. Again, uh, the uh, spiraling debt concerns. EU con consumer confidence. Oh, yes, EU consumer confidence certainly came in the weakest. 
and uh, we've just had Doge Bank downgraded now by Moody. So I think that's a, a hell of a summation for a bearish uh, market. Uh, the uh, the arguments for a bearish market certainly outstrip the um, the concerned or well, the arguments for a bullish market. So. With oil prices hitting a pivot low of 38.5, have bounced back up to almost 39, uh, 80, 39.8, back up to 40, but we are still remaining weak. So let's bring up the part chart of oil now. Um, let's just observe that. Uh, given the fact that oil prices obviously are, are play a major role. Okay, so let's bring up the price of crude oil. Okay, so crude oil, no high high today. So again, that's a cause for concern straight away. That's on the four hour chart. The daily chart itself, as ever since we put in that potential uh, doji candle potential top, okay, given the fact that we've hit that uh, HNS target of 40.3, now we are looking for a potential move on the downside, okay, so bear that in mind. So IHS certainly is out of the equation now, okay, and we are looking at potential top in crude. Now, going over to the 60 minute chart, you can see that we've put in a lower high, and the HNS formation now is certainly starting to show or starting to um, gather some steam here okay so your left shoulder obviously minimum here your head obviously was there and you are looking at this right shoulder so all high should be on the pivot high to the pivot low where we bounced okay and it's exactly that horizontal support and we are looking at a potential um, uh, right shoulder to hold a pivot uh, or the retracement here so you can see previous support equals resistance classical ta pattern here folks Previous support equals resistance and the oil price finding resistance at 41.7. So that certainly show, tells you that you are looking for a lower high now. And then obviously we're going to revisit the $40 potential of 200 MA. So you get signifying weakness and looking for weakness going forward as well. Okay. The 10 minute chart certainly seems exhausted. That uh, topping tail here certainly has held uh, no new high above that. Okay. So again, all eyes in that zone. Okay. So previous support equals resistance here as well. So these are the key zones of resistance for the price of oil, and therefore we're looking for a move low. Given the fact that the Chinese market is obviously into resistance, that will obviously help the EO exacerbate the move lower. So again, keep an eye on that as well. Okay. Uh, another chart, Euro USD. Okay, let's bring up the Euro USD because Euro USD, as we all know, has an inverse relationship with the equities, equity market. So let's just see if the Euro USD is into support, and you can clearly see that it is. Okay. You do have a HNS formation, so again, that certainly needs to be uh, remain vigilant of that. But we are holding previous. Uh, resistance equals support for the euro usd obviously if you break through there you are looking at that level here and then obviously you have support down below here as well so previous resistance equals support 1.121 okay in terms of the market moving event okay so all eyes on that zone if we bounce from here then obviously the market certainly has legs and we will look to potentially move higher okay so euro usd potentially into support is signifying a risk of move let me bring up the chart of the bonds. So again, the bonds are very important here, given the correlation that we have. So if the bonds start to fall lower, then you know that the yields are going to rise and that will send the euro higher and obviously equities lower. So the bonds itself going up to a daily chart, you can see that we're retesting that H&S neckline now. And therefore you are looking for a potential next trust low, which obviously will send the euro USD higher. Yes. Okay. Hope everybody uh, agrees with that concept. Okay. So it's very important. You can see this diagonal trend line certainly is holding. Let's go to a four hour chart, get a zoomed in view and uh, see, uh, certainly get a better view of this, uh, uh, this potential pattern. OK, so we, all we're doing is taking the pivot high from here, connecting it to the next pivot high. And you can see how that lower high certainly has held. So given the fact that we've put in a bearish engulfing candle as well, you can see here you are consolidating and potential move lower. 60 minute chart will clearly show you that you have an unfilled gap below. So for the German bonds, you are looking for a potential uh, move lower. And you can see that we've potentially got a mini little H&S formation brewing here as well. So your left shoulder is here. You've obviously put the head in looking for a right shoulder, then obviously looking for a flush lower. And you will be looking to potentially call close that gap below. So it's all about gap fill below on the bonds. And as we all know, when the bonds move lower, what happens to equities? They will move lower as well. So bonds and equities move in tandem, given the yield nature. So bonds lower, yields higher, higher euro, lower equities. Okay. So H&S formation on bonds will send the equities lower as well. And you have that unfilled gap below. OK, now let's uh, let's just discuss the next variable. We've discussed oil. We've, ah, yes. Let's just bring up a chart of copper. Now, we did have an article today with regards to copper. If I can recollect correctly from the uh, Financial Times, and that was indicating further weakness for copper going forward. If I can just find that article, hopefully we've got it here somewhere. China demand for copper. Here we go. Bingo. So we found it. OK, so China demand for copper uh, forecast to slow. 
Uh, higher cost price that has lifted the gloom and global markets faces a challenge. The demand of the world's largest consumer, China, remains weak, according to consultancy CRU. China is responsible for 40% of global consumption. Wow. Is likely to increase copper consumption uh, 0.6% down from the estimate of 3.8. So that's quite a substantial decrease, folks. Increased cons copper consumption 0.6% this year, down from an estimate of 3.8. Wow. Copper is seen as a key barometer for the health of China's economy due to its use in wiring cables and construction, which we all know. It's also key for fortunes from the world's largest global miners, such as Swiss based Glencore. Okay, so again, that's going to hurt the miners. So we'll come on to the miners soon. Okay, so now, now that we've established that fundamental argument for a weaker price in copper, we know what's going to happen next. Now, let's look at the chart. The chart clearly shows you. I mean, look at this, folks. Double top, uh, topping tail, topping tail, classical topping tail. Uh, and looking at exhaustion pattern, okay, a potential shooting star, call it what you want from a technical basis, but basically resistance, okay, that's that's really the uh, the crux of the matter. So weakness in copper will obviously indicate weakness in commodities, weakness in commodities will mean weakness in Aussie Kiwi, weakness in Aussie Kiwi will equal a uh, risk aversion trade, oil prices low, which we already know, uh, and we know commodities and China certainly have been the two key themes, okay. Uh, given the fact that your rising debt concerns as well that have been highlighted over the weekend, Chinese, uh, equity market which I've already shown you is now into resistance Japanese are obviously on, off on holiday but they remain weak regardless given the US DJPY is languishing at 111 okay um, so given the fact that Mr. Bullard was hawkish and Mr. Lockhart was hawkish too as well that should certainly reignite the dollar and that should hurt the commodity trade okay I mean there's many more arguments I can bring and try and I'm just trying to put the fit the jigsaw puzzle layer together for you and give you an insight into, into market analysis okay right let's bring up the um, before we bring up the uh, charts of uh, the equity markets, let's just bring up the chart of the US dollar. Let's see exactly where that's positioned. Also, with the Remimbi, yes, very important here, folks. The Remimbi. Uh, this is, I think, this is quite important. So let's quickly go to Remimbi, and you can see the Remimbi here it certainly has pushed higher, uh, but has regained back that resistance zone. So all lies in the Remimbi, and we'll see exactly how that trades as well. It certainly, is a uh, cause for concern going forward. So we shall see whether that Remimbi has a. Uh, a com uh, more convincing breaker. Now, let's bring up the chart of the dollar. Bear with me. Here we go. S and B dollar futures. Okay. So the daily chart of the dollar. You can see that we are starting to rise. We've held that potential support in this region here. Uh, the weekly the weekly chart certainly indicates support as well, as you can see here. So you are looking for a potential thrust tire on the dollar index. So. Uh, the four hour chart on the dollar index you can see let's just draw this in for you take the pivot low here connect it to the pivot low here and you can clearly see we've got this pivot low over here so from my perspective you certainly have a move higher yet on the dollar index given the lockhart and bullard speech so you're looking at one two seven on the dollar index okay and then we'll revisit whether or not that can sustain itself or alternatively we can thrust even higher and we can test this 200 ma in this resistance zone at one two eight point three so will Lockhart's speech be sufficient enough for the old gold dollar price to rally higher, causing the uh, commodities uh, uh, to certainly fade and certainly uh, indicate weakness and move lower? And that's what I'm expected to do. The dollar certainly thrust higher on Bullard and uh, Lockhart's comments, uh, given the fact that the dollar has obviously been oversold and that rate hikes are certainly back on the table. Even though today's housing data was relatively weak, the US data are today in the evening. Let's just have a look here as we revisit this. Existing home sales weak than expected. Chicago Fed National Activity Index weaker than expected as well. So not really convincing in terms of U.S. economic data, but Mr. Lockhart's speech certainly did uh, help the uh, bulls uh, side of the, uh, the fence. Okay, so, all right. Now that we've discussed that the dollar is certainly potentially uh, ready for, to move higher, having said that, the euro is also ready to move higher, given bonds are obviously ready to move lower. So, again, we're taking that into consideration. Now, let's just bring up the chart, the European... Uh, equity area European energy sector okay now the daily chart the European energy sector as you can see certainly is indicating resistance 60 minute chart you can see that that horizontal resistance zone is holding so therefore you are looking at weakness now this is the euro one I, don't, I need the uh, stock 600 one don't I okay one second let's just get rid of these two one second I need to get the, re the right ones one second yeah, yeah, yeah. No matter how many times I attempt to get the best charts ready for you, chaps, uh, always fail and struggle. Okay, let's just quickly get the stock 600. Uh, stocks, bank. Is it bank or financials? Yeah, it's bank. Okay. Ah, yeah, 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 come on, what is it? I don't even know, all right, one second. Let me 
just quickly go to my uh, apologies sorry about the delay everything will be up running shortly very very quickly right so I need SX7P that's why I need SX7P go back to my hi 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 caramba go back to my YouTube I uh, it's hard when you're operating on four screens folks very hard trying to get everything right but hopefully once this is done I should be I should be done and dusted okay SX I should have checked the other one as well. Okay, don't matter. Uh, STXE 600 banks, that's what I needed. Okay, so here we go. That's the banks. STXE Energy. STXE Telecom Tech Oil and Gas. That's what I need. Financial Services. No, that must be the banks. Really, the banks that are the focus. Okay, that's fine. Okie dokie, right, I shall be set now, let me just delete the other one, and then I can save this, and then off we go. Okay, so these two, no good. Oops, today you're not sure what I've just deleted, but okay. Right, so I'll get rid of this as well. Save this, so that I don't have a problem again. Fingers crossed. And save, okay. Right, let's go over to the stocks, oil and gas sector. Okay, oil and, or sh oil and gas will be fine, okay, so... Having said that, let's go up to the, um, yeah, oil and gas is fine. Okay, so oil and gas, looking at the daily chart of the, uh, this is the FTSE, come on to that in a second. Okay, stock 600, oil and gas, okay, here we go, interesting. Right, daily chart, as you can see here, 200 MA is held, okay. Not only has 200 MA held, you can see that this uh, previous support equals resistance here is held as well. Okay, and you do have horizontal resistance in this zone previously, as you can see here. Okay, so now you know that those zones come from. Okay, you also have a zone above if you do push high. The 200 MA is held, horizontal resistance, previous support equals resistance is held. Okay, daily chart. 60 minute chart, you've had that pivot high hold, you come into gap fill, but you do have a gap, two more gaps below, and obviously you've got the 200 MA as well. Okay. Going over to the 10 minute chart, and you certainly have closed that potential gap down here, which is impressive. That's one of the reasons why I obviously went long. Okay, but you do have another unfilled gap below. So, given the fact that oil is obviously coming into a potential, and you have another unfilled gap below as well. So, two unfilled gaps below, given the fact that you rejected the high, the highs up here, then you are looking, although you do have an unfilled gap above. So, bear, bear that in mind. So, if oil prices start to push higher, you know where the euro stocks will look to potentially close above. But you are looking at potential gap below looking to close first okay so again looking at a potential HNS formation here you can clearly see it uh, there we go so you got your left shoulder obviously registered here you've pushed higher and then obviously you create your right shoulder looking for to potentially move lower so whole concept is you're looking for a lower high and then obviously you're looking for a lower low below okay so all eyes on that lower low right so these the uh, the actual energy sector certainly is into potential resistance territory Okay, now let's look at the banking sector. Banking sector, again, you can clearly see here, 10 minute chart has a H&S formation, it's very evident. Uh, you can see the left shoulder here, uh, you've got the head, and obviously looking for a right shoulder and looking for a potential move low. Bringing up the 60 minute chart, you can see that you are looking at a potential lower high. So no new higher high, so bear that in mind as well. So very, very important. So double top, and then looking for a lower high on the Euro stock. So again, previous resistance equals support in this zone, okay? So again, that's a zone that we're looking for to potentially close. Now the daily chart, you can see that we've certainly pushed higher, have rejected. We did expect this bull flag to potentially play out and then obviously consolidate and move higher. That hasn't occurred. So again, that's certainly a, a, a victory for the bulls to a large extent. Given the fact that Deutsche Bank has been downgraded by Moody's, that in and of itself is going to exert pressure on the banking sector tomorrow, okay? And therefore, you're looking for, for, for potential weakness. The horizontal resistance is held there, and it's all about how low we can go, okay? There is an argument for an inverted head and shoulders, but given the fact that equity markets are certainly testing those highs, given the fact they've made new highs in testing, certainly not looking uh, low, looking low, bold, doesn't bode well going forward, okay? Okay, let's go back to European equities now. I think the fact this video is almost 20 minutes long now, wow try to keep the videos short I do apologize okay so daily chart uh, you are looking at resistance resistance has held with that topping tail you're looking at bearish consolidation it's an inside bar okay certainly could break either way but you are looking at same potential argument for a move lower 
60 minute chart you can see that um, we're still within this um, zone or to be a symmetrical type wedge pattern but bear in mind you have the unfilled gap below at 2970 that needs to close and that's what you'll be looking to potentially target given the fact that the euro stocks is not currently in 3050 zone beautiful beautiful hns formation look at that pattern perfect okay so that's the pattern that i expect to play out given the three win that 35050 zone and looking for that potential gap fill below you can see that gap fill very clearly at 2970 hns target 3090 minus the neckline at 3040 uh, you're looking at a 50 point gap you're looking at 2990 which is around here and then gap fill is potentially lower at 2970 so certainly looking for hns formation to play out and that gap fill below to close okay uh, support is seen at the uh, 3020 zone and then obviously three three five thousand so given the fact that buns are now weak you're always into support dollar looking to potentially move higher and obviously cause concerns with regards to emerging markets emerging markets and world index i haven't sure even shown you that yet folks that certainly is into resistance as well uh, dollar into support aussie kiwi looking to move lower everything certainly is falling in line for a potential risk off scenario okay Looking at the Europe 350, again, we're stuck at that resistance zone, so therefore looking at better risk off. And the German DAX, again, classical HS formation. I mean, if I can just uh, elaborate on this, okay, look at this pattern here, folks. Uh, HS, okay, so you've got this head sh left shoulder here, head. Then obviously you look at this right shoulder, and we're looking to potentially move it over. And we all know that unfilled gap below remains at 9,500, okay? Going over to the 60 minute chart, you can see that we've put in a potential double top now okay uh, it has rejected that looking at potential double top and we're just consolidating now for this bear flag formation here and then obviously looking to uh, potentially move lower and test that lower 9800 so all eyes on that lower so 9770 sorry just to be precise okay that's the zone that you're looking for okay so we shall see how the german dax reacts in our 10 minute chart i've already shown you the daily chart the german dax again you're in that bear flag territory bearish consolidation within that red candle looking to potentially move lower okay right and given the fact that eu consumer confidence was certainly weak today as well that certainly will exert pressure on that the cac was overtly bearish regardless of the german dax we've broken out this bullish channel and therefore remains risk off okay 60 minute chart for the french cac uh, again you have this hns formation with this lower high here although we have potentially attempted to close that gap at 4350 you do have two more gaps below so certainly looking for further weakness on the french cac uh, if we take this diagonal trend line connect it from the top here you clearly see that diagonal trend line is holding and um, it's all eyes on this potential symmetrical wedge so we'll see exactly which way this market goes but you are looking at a potential retest that 4380 zone potentially low okay in terms of the FTSE 100 now okay let's bring up the FTSE 100 you have a rising contracting wedge pattern therefore bearish 60 minute chart has a HS formation which abracadabra is in line with other EU indices and you are looking for potential weakness okay yeah uh, in terms of the FTSE 100 itself 10 minute chart the FTSE 100 you can clearly see we're in a symmetrical wedge and looking for a potential move lower given the arguments that we discussed with regards to commodities into resist resistance commodity currencies etc etc okay i think this video is too long now it's 23 minutes i do apologize once again i will try my best to keep these short and concise but then obviously again you need uh, quite an in-depth analysis and arguments for a potential short sell so from my perspective, looking for move lower and looking for weakness in Asia overnight. Goodbye now. Be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs. Goodbye.